Christ Lutheran Church, we're very glad that you have come to be with us this evening, and we pray that God would bless us as we worship. If there are any guests or visitors here with us, you are very, very welcome always with us. We also have visitor bags in the narthex that you can be sure and pick up and take home with you. And if you have a guest or someone who is with you or you know they're a visitor, please help them and make them feel welcome. And also feel free to make sure that they do get one of those visitor bags. As we gather together this evening, I want to wish everyone a truly blessed and safe Independence Day weekend coming up. As we gather together today, there are a lot of special things in the worship service as we thank God for our country. Also, we thank God not only for our citizenship in the United States of America, but also as we gather together, we give thanks to God for our citizenship in heaven. As Christians living in our country, we have a special opportunity and responsibility to point people to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As Jesus sent out the 72 disciples, he gave them special instructions, and those instructions still help us today. And that is what we'll be talking about this evening. As we gather together for worship, a few announcements. First of all, you're invited to join us for fireworks on the 4th, a lot of uh, wonderful opportunities to gather together with our church family and also with our community. And there are a number of free goodies also that we'll have with us that day. On the 4th of July, special note, our church office will be closed. One final announcement that we'll mention out loud, and that is our church picnic is coming up. The summer is actually starting to go by pretty quickly now that July is almost here. Uh, time to think about the church picnic. You can check out that display in the narthex and RSVP or attendance there, or and or uh, volunteer to help out in a myriad of different ways that are available. So be sure and take a peek at that. You can also check out the Vacation Bible School display there in the narthex. Well, those are a few of our announcements that we have this evening. Please join me now in a word of prayer as we begin our time together as we worship the Lord. We pray. Dear Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we gather together this day. And we're so thankful for the blessings of one another, for the blessing of being able to gather for worship and the freedom to do so. We pray that you would continue to watch over and bless our country and our leaders, those who serve and protect and those who keep us safe in many different ways. Bless us also as citizens and also as your followers that we may uh, exercise the opportunities that we have to live out our lives to your glory here as we do so in the United States. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. As we gather together this evening, we sing our opening hymn now, Before You, Lord, We Bow.
We invite you to stand for our invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now, as we gather together, confess our sins before the Lord. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption, but the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. Our own flesh, our sinful nature, is corrupt and doomed to die. We are indeed by nature sinful and unclean, for we have sinned against God. And we uh, have sown the seeds of hate and discord and covetousness and pride. Confessing our sin, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Hear the good news. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We remain standing as we sing our next hymn, God Bless Our Native Land. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have built your church on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. Continue to send your messengers to preserve your people in true peace that by the preaching of your word your church may be kept free from all harm and danger through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we listen to God's word together. Our Old Testament reading is from the 66th chapter of the prophet Isaiah. Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her, all you who love her. Rejoice with her in joy, all you who mourn over her, that you may nurse and be satisfied from her consoling breast, that you may drink deeply with delight from her glorious abundance. For thus says the Lord, Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river, and the glory of the nations like an overflowing stream. You shall nurse, and you shall be carried upon her hip, and bounced upon her knees. As one whom his mother comforts, so will I comfort you. So shall you be comforted in Jerusalem. You shall see, and your heart shall rejoice. Your bones shall flourish like the grass, and the hand of the Lord shall be known to his servants, and he shall show his indignation against his enemies. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle is from the sixth chapter of the book of Galatians. 
Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one test his own work, and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor, for each will have to bear his own load. One who is taught the word must share all good things with the one who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary of doing good. For in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. But far be it from me to boast, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither circumcision counts for anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creation. And as for all who walk by this rule, peace and mercy be upon them and upon the Israel of God. From now on, let no one cause me trouble, for I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We invite you to stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them on ahead of him, two by two, into every town and place where he himself was about to go. And he said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I am sending you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no money bag, no knapsack, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace be to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest upon him. But if not, it will return to you. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking what they provide, for the laborer deserves his wages. Do not go from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and they receive you, eat what is set before you. Heal the sick in it and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not receive you, go into its streets and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to our feet we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, it will be more bearable on that day for Sodom than for that town. Woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more bearable in the judgment for Tyre and Sidon than for you, and you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? You shall be brought down to Hades. The one who hears you hears me, and the one who rejects you rejects me, and the one who rejects me rejects him who sent me. The 72 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord Praise to you, O Christ. You may now be seated. We invite the young people of the congregation to come forward for the children's message. 
and children do get older, so we understand. And we now continue with our next hymn, Glorious Things of You Are Spoken. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, all men, dearest brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. You've heard of the so-called finer things in life. These finer things are what people usually refer to as something of high quality. And people have been driven in the search of financial success and their desire to pursue the finer things in life. Let's face it, in order to achieve these finer things in life, it does take a certain level of financial prosperity. Things like fine paintings would be an example of one of the finer things in life, or leather furniture, or a well-engineered or otherwise fancy car, designer clothes and purses, really, really, really nice toys, really, really, really nice houses, 
Yet, while pursuing, pursuing these finer things in life, we often become so focused on that pursuit that we miss out on some of the simple joys of life. Some people have quotations about that. Coretta Scott King said, I'm fulfilled in what I do. I never thought that a lot of money or fine clothes, the finer things of life, would make you happy. My concept of happiness is to be filled in a spiritual sense. Douglas Coupland says this, birds are a miracle because they prove to us there is a finer, simpler state of being which we may strive to attain. And even Lady Nancy Astor said, real education should educate us out of self into something far finer, into a selflessness which links us with all humanity. In that vein, many people have tried to make a list of some of the finer things that don't include what we can buy with money. Perhaps this even was what our founding fathers had in mind when they penned the words life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And such a list as this could include clear starry nights or the unbridled laughter of children it could include watching a new dragonfly emerge or seeing baby ducks and geese. It could include watching a child fold their hands in prayer or the refreshing smell of rain as we have experienced. It could include chocolate chip cookies fresh from the oven, seeing fireflies while out on a walk, random acts of kindness forgiveness, or even the first beautiful spring day after a long winter. A week ago, I went hiking with my son and my future son-in-law at the Mead Wildlife Area. We had been deluged by mosquitoes, but it was priceless to watch the worries fade away and the anxieties disappear. And we were treated to a beautiful sunset. Oh, a little bit of thunder there. It kind of, you know, when you're looking at fine jewelry, it helps to have a contrasting background. That's right. So as we th think about that hike that we were on, not only did we have a beautiful sunset, but there were all kinds of birds that were flying around feasting on the mosquitoes that had heretofore been feasting on us. And as we were driving home that day, I thought to myself that it was such a simple and wholesome joy that there wasn't anywhere else right at that moment where I would rather be. In our gospel reading, Jesus sent out the 72 disciples, and as he sends them out, he makes it rather simple and rather straightforward. He takes the guesswork out of everything. He tells them what they need and what they don't need. He tells them what to say and what to not say. He tells them where their strength is found and even what is in store for them. Wouldn't it be wonderful to have that kind of focus and clarity? Wouldn't it be wonderful if Jesus said the same kind of things to us? Wouldn't it make life simpler and help us get past and rise above the relentless pursuit of the finer things and to be able then to hold on to the better things? I know that it would and the wonderful thing is that Jesus does, in fact, say all of this and more to us. Because he spoke not only to the 72 that he sent out, 
but he speaks to you and me. And as Jesus speaks to us, we learn from his words. First of all, we learn that Jesus is better than our stuff. The scene was a scene of urgency. Jesus' time was short. He had a lot to accomplish before his crucifixion. And so he sent out 72 individuals, two by two, that he had chosen to go into the places that he was going and into the towns ahead of him. In just a few words of instruction, he saved them a lot of headaches. He said, carry no money bag, no knapsack, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. It is really quite amazing. This was something that required a fair amount of traveling and a fair amount of time, and they weren't even supposed to bring a knapsack or a money bag. Just imagine going on vacation and not packing a suitcase and not even bringing your wallet or your purse. Who would do such a thing? Why even attempt to do such a thing? That's a very good question. And to answer that question in the book of Deuteronomy, we see that Moses was commanded by God to speak to the Israelites in the land of Moab while they were near the end of their wilderness wanderings. It was time for them to renew their commitment to God and to be reminded of his commitment toward them. So Moses told them what God had spoken through Moses, God told them, I have led you 40 years in the wilderness. Your clothes have not worn out on you, and your sandals have not worn off of your feet. You have not eaten bread, and you have not drunk wine or strong drink, that you may know that I am the Lord your God. This is a powerful reminder and is, in fact, parallel to Jesus' instructions to the 72. Jesus is indeed better than any of the stuff they could have brought with them, money included. Jesus is who we truly need. He is the Lord. He is our Savior. He gave his life to forgive us and rose from the dead so that he could always be with us. And that is better than anything else. Now, I know very well that we as people love collecting things. It's one of our favorite pastimes. Homes are filled with a collection of figurines and jewelry and trophies and you name it, and that's okay. But we must always remember that these are temporary things that can't measure up to the importance of nurturing our relationship with Jesus by being fed regularly from the Word of God. God is the one who will be able to sustain us, not only through this life, but into eternity. Long after our collections have gathered dust and our money has been spent. We also learn from Jesus that going is better than staying. In the song, America the Beautiful, it famously speaks of amber waves of grain. It's one of my favorite lines always in that song. For us as Christians, these words take on a new meaning. When Jesus spoke to the 72 disciples, he said, The harvest is plentiful but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Those amber waves of grain that we sing about represent a field that is ready for harvest. I love looking out of the church doors on that side of the narthex over there and seeing the 
field next door because it is always a reminder of the mission that we have. We, like the 72, are given a huge responsibility of not sitting inside our comfort zones or even focusing on the inner business of the church, but rather on the needs that surround us and the necessity to proclaim the gospel. The way still needs to be prepared for Jesus, and this must be our greatest priority because it is our highest calling as a congregation. In the third place, we also learn from Jesus that peace is a better greeting. The message of the gospel is a straightforward message. People will either agree with it or disagree with it. And there is no in-between. There is no third option. They will either receive us in Jesus' name or they will reject us. As we look at our country, we may start to get the idea that our culture is shifting away from Christianity. We have seen a lot of anger and fear and animosity and condescension. We've been lied to. We've seen the divisions and we've felt the worry. We do have a choice, though, in all of this. We are not simply helpless at the whims and whimsies of history. We have a choice, and that is how we begin the conversation with other people about our faith in Jesus Christ. So what do we do? How do we approach others? Do we become defensive? Do we become hostile? Do we back away and isolate ourselves? Do we act as the world around us and engage in name-calling and in, in denigrating others? The answer is no. Jesus knew that sometimes the disciples would be welcomed, and sometimes they would be scorned, but always they were to start things off on good footing with a better greeting than they may have been greeted with. For Jesus said, whatever house you enter, first say, peace. Peace be to this house. Jesus says the same to us. We are ambassadors to bring peace to our neighbors and to our nation. Let us live and speak accordingly. If we should be rejected, let that not deter us from our mission, but rather move us forward in our calling to proclaim God's word to a nation in need. Finally, we also learn from Jesus that better things are yet to come. The 72 had such great success that upon their return, they rejoiced that they could even have control over demons. And Jesus declared that he saw Satan's downfall unfolding right at that very moment. They had accomplished a spiritual victory. People were turning toward Jesus, repenting of their sins, trusting in his promise. But as great as all that is, and it is truly great, Jesus said this. He said, Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. What wonderful comfort. In the book of Revelation, it says, the one who conquers will be clothed thus in white garments, and I will never blot out his name out of the book of life. I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. This is the heavenly Zion, the new Jerusalem, the promised place of rest for the people of God. Permit me for 
just a little bit to talk about the Old Testament lesson from Isaiah chapter 66. The historical situation was that the people of Jerusalem were in exile in Babylon. God promised that a remnant would be saved and would return home and would rebuild the temple. They were promised that they would be saved out of suffering and sorrow and turmoil and hardship. And even while they waited, the news that they would one day return to Jerusalem was like a mother comforting, even nourishing her child. And so for us, the nourishment that God provides in abundance and I love how it's called peace like a river, is the news, the promise of what would one day happen when God's people return home. That is our peace like a river. For God will always provide for his remnant people out of every nation who turn to him in faith, trusting in him and in his promises. And he will provide for his remnant, giving us the peace and joy of knowing that there are better things yet to come in this city, in our neighborhood, and in our nation. The better things that we're speaking of, especially relate to our heavenly home, wherein lies our true citizenship and where it ever will remain. Therefore, let us put Jesus above all else in our lives. Let us go boldly forth in his name. Let us have our words speak peace and let us rejoice in his promises for these truly are the better things. Amen. Let us now stand as we confess our faith in the words of our next hymn. We all believe in one true God. as we gather our offerings and worship the Lord through our offerings and the offering before him of our lives. We invite you to stand. We join our hearts and minds as we come before God now in prayer. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, as your kingdom comes near to us in the mighty works of your Son, Graciously grant us to hear him, 
through those he sends to us, that we might rejoice that he has written our names in heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, as Satan writhes with rage in the last days of his power, keep us from faltering in the face of his fury, but cause us to boldly tread on his every power in the truth that the demons are subjected to us in Christ's name. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, keep us in your Son's humble way that we may not think we are something when we are nothing. Help us to sow to the Spirit freely that we might know the joy of walking in your Son's giving and forgiving way. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, you order the nations under heaven according to your will. We praise you for your patience with our nation and the mercy you have shown her in the past. Bless her in this coming year with leaders who fear you and guide us into your just and wise ways. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, all who journey on earth, sea, and air do so under your watchful eye. Keep all those who travel to our Synod's Convention in Milwaukee in your almighty care. Be with all who travel from our congregation also as they travel back from the Brewer game or as they travel to Life Fest or, or the youth gathering, that their journeys may be safe and their homecomings joyful. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, be near to all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. In our midst, we pray. We also pray, Heavenly Father, for all who mourn for a loved one, asking that you would bless them with your peace like a river. And we pray also for all who mourn for our dear brother in Christ, Gene Seafelt, as he is laid to rest tomorrow here at 11. And we give you thanks for being with him throughout his earthly life. And now, for the sake of Jesus Christ, bringing him to be with you in that place that is better than we could ever imagine. And we give you thanks for the promise that sustains us during this earthly life also of our heavenly home. Heavenly Father, for all for whom we have prayed, grant them health and healing according to your perfect will. Help us not to grow weary of doing good to everyone, especially our brothers and sisters in the household of faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, make your hand known to us in this victory feast of your Son's body and blood that we are about to receive, that in this eating and drinking we might know your mighty power to save and strengthen, be strengthened to live now and forever in your eternal peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, you have promised that we shall be comforted in Jerusalem, where our hearts shall rejoice and our bones shall flourish like the grass. Sustain us as you sustain the saints before us, that we may safely journey through the trials of this present age into the joys that await us with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, dear Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated and are invited forward to receive our Lord's own body and blood in with and under the bread and the wine of Holy Communion. May this true body and blood of our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ keep you and strengthen you in the one true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Amen. As we get ready for our final hymn, uh, thank you to Bruce Jensema, who was organist here for many, many years, rejoining us this evening and, and playing organ for us. Thank you very much, Bruce, and very wonderful to hear you and to see you as well. Let us now conclude our service as we sing, When Peace Like the River. And may God be with you and bless you and also bless our country that we hold dear. <laughs>